Welcome to Voxypop's Community Town Hall. I am your host, Brooke Ginty. I am delighted today to be here with the students who from Phoenixville Area School District who led the Black Lives Matter protest within our community. On Friday, we um, had over 2,100 protesters. So what these students did is no feat. For those of us who participated and those who didn't, it started on the uh, Bridge End Main and it started with a three minute moment of silence. And then the students led us up the street, up Main all the way to Reeves Park, where we had a, probably about an hour I would say guys, uh, protest with many different speakers. It poured rain, nobody flinched, everybody stood and it was one of those moments in Phoenixville that will go down in history. So I am here with all of the students today. I want us to have this conversation with them about how it started and what they are thinking about moving forward. So let me start by introducing our students. All right, guys, thank you for being with me. Thank you. I'm gonna start um, down here with Nakia Lee, and then I want you to go around, just introduce yourself, let us know what grade you're in, and if you've graduated, first of all, congratulations, and then second of all, let us know what your plans are. So go ahead, Nakia Lee. Hi, my name is Nakia Lee Ladmore Beasley. I recently graduated and I will be attending Coppin State University in Baltimore and majoring in biology. That's awesome. Move it next. Hi, uh, I'm Isaiah Pelzer. I am a uh, incoming um, senior and I'm just excited to be here with you this morning. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All that good energy. Hi, my name is Dominic Grader. Um, <laughs> I graduated. I plan to attend the American Academy for Dramatic Arts. And yeah. Thank you. No, pass go ahead, Jeremiah. Joint. No, I'm telling him pass that joint. No, so you're going to you're gonna oh, give okay, up okay. that microphone. I know you want to yeah, hold no, on No, no, it's all good. <laughs> My name is Jeremiah Box. I am a senior, recently graduated, and I plan to attend Lincoln University or pursue my dreams of being an entrepreneur and entertainer. Awesome. And go ahead, speak up, too, because I still need to hear you over here. Okay. Hi, my name is Nyla Green, and I am a incoming senior. Hi, my name is Gladiator Garner, and I'm going to my junior year, and I kind of just plan on doing track and doing me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mackenzie Hodges, and um, I'm an incoming junior. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here. So uh, we talked a little bit before we started this Voxy Pop, but I, I think it's really great. Can you let us know how did this protest start? How did you guys get it moving off the ground? Um, I guess I'll, I'll say this one. Um, so it really all started with a group chat. Um, one morning, you know, I was asleep and I woke up to about 45 notifications on my phone um, about a Black Lives Matter protest. And um, we put it together, figured it out, made some calls, and it happened. And yeah, that was basically it. That's awesome. So it started kind of organically, right? You just yeah. had a group chat. And were all of you in the group chat? Yeah, yeah, yes. all of us was in the group chat. It was, at, uh, and and more importantly, we all had something to say, which was which was why the group chat was created. And uh, I, I do want to give props to Glidera because yes. if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have even had the group yeah. chat. So it's really important to you know start those conversations. And also, guys, it's super brave that you not only just took that conversation, but you gave it legs. Um, if Am I correct that at some point, uh, Mayor Urschler got involved and maybe yeah. helped yes. a little bit? So yes. anybody wanna talk about getting involved with Mayor Peter? The Mayor Peter? Um, I actually just called the, um, the borough and like left a voicemail for his secretary and him. And then about an hour later, he called me back and said it was a great idea and asked if there was anything he could do to help and then he, we set up a Zoom call with Mayor Ursler and all of us to that, so we could get all the kinks sorted out and stuff, and then it just happened. That's awesome. All right, so are you all from the district? You've all kind of been, if not born, at least raised and gone through the district here? Yeah. 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 Okay. So tell me about your experiences here in Phoenixville as students of color. Uh, I think for me personally, it's been uh, it's been interesting. I think we can all, for the most part, kind of attest to being a, a quite quite a minority here, like in the district. Just as there is a higher population of those who don't look like us, more Caucasians, less African Americans, and those of other minority races, and it's kind of difficult at times because 
you want when you're younger before you you know start making your own opinions and stuff you kind of want to like be everybody else you want to fit in and everything but like it takes a lot of effort in learning to like realize like who you are and what you need to stand for and really not succumb to everything that's going on everything that's influencing you so much mm -hmm. yeah you really find out who you are going through going through like middle school to high school and like it's a, a wider environment and there's more people like more opinions you like form your own opinions find yourself especially considering like there's definitely like still stereotypes so you're like so like how can I like not make that stereotype true for you and I think that we all like coming into high school figure out like who we are and who we want to be so we don't become that like stereotype of right. a African American. I mean defining yourself as a, as a who you are as an individual as an adult is one thing but then defining yourself within a community that doesn't reflect you know doesn't look like you mostly is probably super hard. Um, anybody else have any specific instances that they that that stood out for them in this ex in this experience through the district? Um, well I've was born and raised in Phoenixville Elementary in Phoenixville and I live on the north side of town which is a predominantly black area and when I was in kindergarten I had to take an exam and I got instead of me going to my local elementary school <coughs> I had to go to Schuylkill Elementary which is across town and at that school there are African Americans we are the smallest minority Jeremiah also attended Schuylkill Elementary as well and being in that I was in a advanced program all throughout elementary school and I was the only black one and that really showed me I would try to make friends but I was singled out because I wasn't like everybody else mm -hmm. and no matter what I did I would come home to my parents crying and asking like what did I do wrong and they had to tell me that sometimes you're just different than other people and no matter what just stay true to yourself and that's why I'm glad I found a group of like-minded individuals who are also people of color and help me motivate and get me through high school and everything. That makes my mom heart break really it does and it's you know I think one of the things we've heard or seen after the George Floyd incident is if you've seen those posts, like once he called out for his mom, it, it ignited every mom out there, and it's it's true. And and so as a mother, when I'm hearing that, it's um, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. And I'm hoping, I think like the rest of us, we're hoping that this is going to make a difference, right? Yeah. What do you guys think? It was definitely. Yes, was definitely. I hope so. I hope it really this time is the last time because a lot of people don't realize this isn't a new topic. It's not a new issue. is isn't the first time we're hearing about this. It's been going on for the last 400 years and it's taken so much and so many people to lose their lives in order for people to actually listen to what we have to say. And it's not fair that we have to, you know, be in a community where we're not allowed to talk about these kinds of things just because people are living in fear and are scared to get judged on it when it's not even it's not even uh, you don't even have to think about it anymore it's kind of just everyone versus racism it's everyone versus injustice and inequality now I mean one of the big things that I think we've seen too and it's true is it's no longer just good enough not to be a racist right like now we all have to be anti-racist that's right. and and that's a change that's a change that I think has has started with these protests Dom, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to go off the, uh, of what um, what your question was about um, the background and stuff. Like, I, I came from an area, uh, I actually grew up in Norristown, where, you know, there are more African Americans than, than Caucasians. And moving up here definitely was a drastic change. Um, uh, moving up here, it, it was moving into into an area where I couldn't walk down the street to go to a park or go to a corner store. It was moving into a nice area, uh, a neighborhood where I didn't have to worry about more more danger or anything like that. So, and especially when it when it came down to the school, because when I first when I first started going to the middle school, I was scared. <laughs> I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and and how I wanted to come about my my years of being in the Phoenixville uh, school district and honestly after 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 my um what is it called uh, when they when they um, 
when they show you around the school. Oh. Orientation? Yeah. yeah. My, my, uh, what is it called? Orientation. Yeah. My orientation for the school, I was actually put with a Caucasian. And I, it, they made me feel like, like they were, they were, they were me. So I, I'm not going to say I've had any bad experiences in the district, but I've, I, I've, I've seen some, some stuff. Uh, yeah, that was a, that's a good point. Um, another thing, definitely, um, that I can and probably many of us can uh, speak on, is um, definitely being um, categorized as being smart for a black person or for an African American because um, all of us are very intelligent people. Um, we're all really, really intelligent. Um, our intellect is um, not not to be like arrogant or cocky, but it's really beyond our years if you really sit down and think about it. So um, definitely being labeled as uh, intelligent for a black person and not a person in general, um, that I grew up like that hurt a lot. Um, you guys are also brave, extremely brave. Thank you, right? thank you. Very brave thank to have you. to endure what you've endured, but also to see beyond it. And I think that's probably so much, that's really what is the struggle here because for most people, right, we just see our little worlds, okay? And and it is brave and it is hard to see beyond your world. And it's hard to have these conversations because they're not comfortable conversations, but that's where we need to be, right? We need to have uncomfortable conversations. You need to say, speak your truth and make people uncomfortable because if you don't speak your truth about it, then nobody's gonna understand, right? So we are at this point of having these conversations. And so thank you, first of all, for being here and having this conversation, because it's brave and it might not be comfortable, but it's necessary. Um, what about the district, right? What do you think, you know, now that you're in high school, Dr. Parkinson, ha let's talk about some of the good that, there, that, that you see in the district, um, that the district is supporting you as a, as a person of color. All right. Uh, I think that uh, I think that there's been a lot of good in our district as far as it goes with um, toleration, I should say. So like a lot of anything that happens that seems to be uh, whether how obvious it is or, or how obvious it is or not um, something that's racist or unjust that happens in our district. I believe in general it is pretty well taken care of and well uh, well. Um, regulated because we have like we have had a couple incidences here uh, where it just was absolutely unacceptable but the way that we went about it we've had our assemblies and stuff and we really communicated with the entire like student population to really effectively like try to instill in each student that it's not right like what like certain things that people say certain things that people do it's not acceptable it's not okay and it shouldn't happen here and they'll do their best like our faculty and administration will do their best to make sure that it doesn't happen here and like yeah I personally appreciate that like what the efforts that they've made yeah and going off of that one of the incidents that happened I had the chance to speak on it like Dr. P pulled me aside and was like oh like do you want to talk about what happened and talk about like your experience of what happened so I had the chance to speak in front of the upperclassmen and see my view on it so me doing that that just it just shows how we handle it instead of just like pushing putting on the back burner actually putting it to light and telling us like this is wrong like this should not happen and having that conversation having that uncomfortable conversation so that's what that's what I think is very good about the district is that we actually talked about it instead of like putting on the back burner like some of the schools yeah so it's a lot of this process is about right making sure that your principals and your um, superintendents are the individuals who can help guide the student body as a whole so um, I'm going to give my little voting piece here because do you know how those individuals most often get their jobs? No, no right? The, um, the um, school board uh, does a lot of those things and do you know how the school board gets appointed or gets their positions? They get voted in. So they are just, Blake who was just here with us, you know, she's a mom of the district. Um, she ran on a political platform and asked to be a part of the school board and then was voted upon to be a part of the school board. And that school board are, are, you know, they make a lot of these integral decisions about what goes on in the district. So this is my piece to you guys too. For those of you who are 18, vote. For those of who are, are not 18, at least get involved because 
it's voting somebody like Mayor Peter that makes a change within our schools, right? It's voting in our, our district representative, Melissa Schusterman. She goes off to the Congress in Pennsylvania and speaks on behalf of everybody within her district. So it starts granular level with everything that you're doing within your school, but then also we got to move it into our streets, right? And that means we got to figure out voting. So that's my little vote piece, but I had to do it. Um, and I will, I'm going to have conversations with Dr. Dewan and Dr. Parkinson about what the school district is doing um, following Black Lives Matter. And, and actually, I know Dr. Dewan has been doing a lot within the school district. Uh, my son is in, in kindergarten, and I know that there's a lot of conversations behind the scenes that you guys don't get to see, but they're really working on our language. They're working on those conversations. They're working on how we're, you guys are getting taught, how everybody's getting taught. Um, my son used the, the terminology peach skin the other day, which I thought was so astonishing. The first I'd ever heard it, and he was taught it in school. But calling somebody peach instead of white takes a lot of that power, right? And it defines the color. So I, I'm, we'll have that conversation later, so I hope you guys will watch it. Now let's talk about the protests, guys. What do you think? You are the group that formed the Phoenixville protest that ABC6 was here and Voxypop was there looking at. So what's your experience after the protest? What do you guys think as you reflect back on it? Um, I definitely thought it was pretty amazing just because for one, I wasn't expecting it. For two, it really just started with a flyer on social media and somehow it spread throughout the whole town. And after, I think a lot of people really are starting to open their eyes and a lot of people that I didn't even know, like more Caucasian people, friends that I had, I didn't know, cared so much about what was happening. And it just felt so good to see people out there. I saw tears in people's eyes. And, it, and I think now it really shows, like, change could come. It is, people are really starting to hear what we're saying and people are really starting to open their eyes up and change the person they are in order so we can change as a whole, which I think was really good to see. And I thought it was just really cool to like Google my name and see stuff pop up, to be honest. Look at yeah. you. Honestly, honestly, it's so true because it's like now, beforehand, you, you would be able to walk down the street and, and people would just mind their business. You'll have the casual people that'll, that'll stop and say something. But after the protests, I, it's been so many people that I would just walk past down the street and they, they'll they'll stop and give you the time of day to say hi how are you and it's and it's those type of people that are really inspiring us and making and and bettering us to to put out this uh, or to make want to make this change come even faster than what it is. Yeah, Jeremiah. <clears throat> I would say for myself, speaking from the heart here. As far as what I've, I've, I've experienced after the protest, I've experienced a mix of emotions. I've experienced a mix of opinions on people and an opinion on myself, really. It's really adjusted my perception and my, my view of what I think my life should be used for and what I think all of us can be used for in terms of what can we achieve. You know, I've, I've come down off my high horse. I've gotten back up on my high horse after this, thinking to myself, you know, 2,135 people, that's crazy. But what am I doing with it? Mm -hmm. Kind of stuff like that, you know. Like piggybacking off of what Don was saying, people uh, stop by and, you know, say stuff to us or say stuff to me, like, oh, good job with the protest or good job with the, um, the whole movement and we're so sorry for what's going on. It feels like pity sometimes. Mm -hmm and it feels like graces sometimes. And I think discerning the two and learning the difference between both of those sides of the field will really educate me into like how I can take me and my peoples here, my friends, my, my family, I would not be here without these people. So I wanna take us all to the highest form of success that we can achieve and do all that we can to just be the best we can, be the greatest of our time. Because it's, it's a generation that many people won't ever know what it's like to be like us. You know, the freshest generation with the technology. And, uh, with you know this. what's really crazy is I think all of us are sitting and everything feels heavy, right? The coronavirus is heavy on yeah. us. George Floyd was heavy on us. But George Floyd sparked uncovering centuries of what's yeah. been going on and I can understand the frustration of like uh yeah 
yeah, this has been happening, right? But I think the goal is for everybody, we're going to look back. This is this is history, right? Yeah, definitely. You guys are in you guys are now in the history books as a part of as a part of this movement. And now the idea is, all right, we've made history, right? Now what? Yeah. We have to use this. We've got to use this momentum and this power that has been found that you guys have created right and move it forward because this is just the tiniest step toward a very long process so guys what is next um well right now we're working on our um, juneteenth celebration um, we're trying to get all the kinks out of that one, um, trying to, you know, move forward with that. Coronavirus is uh, kind of making it difficult, but um, something's going to happen on Juneteenth. We're, we're, something's going to, it may, it may not be what we want, may not be what we uh, see, but something's going to happen just so we can um, continue this momentum. And we've been, um, we've been talking as a group to um, talk about things that we want to see change. Um, I, I, I remember one thing that we talked about was um, putting um, more African-American um, based topics in, um, into schools, into our schools, yeah. into the um, social studies topic um, as a whole, so people can um, learn about our history um, and really see that this isn't just like a, you know, the American dream didn't just come out of nowhere. It was some, some things that we had to go through as African Americans to, and even that we still are going through, um, to see that to see that dream. So yeah. Yeah, talking about that, I also feel like what we want to do, we want to achieve like the youth because they are the ones that could also make the change because they're the ones that are coming up. So I think that's what our focus is. And also talking about having our history in the books. I feel like what we talk about now is we talk about the same few people, Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, like they were very, very, they were very influential, but there's more people than that. And I also feel like we just learn we just learned that we were like slaves, but then we had people like we should be learning more about what we did for this country as long as other people did. Like I feel like there should shine the light of what we also did. And that's what we're like achieving. We're trying to achieve the youth thinking about it so we could have those conversations young. So when they come up that, you know, that change could actually happen. And I, we've also been working on kind of like building a business with this because we, after getting so much feedback and stuff after the protests, we thought it was just the best idea to take this as far as possible. We came up with like almost a brand name and we want to really turn this into something. We've been trying to talk to the right people in order to make this as good as possible but also keep it peaceful and healthy so it's not like toxic attention or anything like that so i think it's definitely good that we've kind of built a family family here and if you didn't know we call ourselves black Lens, but we all came up with that one together and we kind of build a family that we want to build a business with because we all see this in our future and we all care so much about the specific topic and we're all so passionate about it that why wouldn't we take this as far as it can go? Why wouldn't we keep people talking? Why wouldn't we keep doing things to make sure change really does come around this time? Yes. It takes passion and you guys clearly have passion for this, um, for Black Excellence and for your brand. And it, it's going to take some tenacity too, right? So this is this is not going to be an easy task ahead. But with that passion and with your support of each other, I'm I'm sure you guys can do it. Isaiah, you want to oh. add anything here? Uh, I, if anything, I want to I would bounce off of what Naila said about uh, just the youth, because people don't realize how like strongly embedded those types of perceptions and prejudices are in people like there's there's so many things that you can do to educate yourself on that like there's videos of kindergarten teachers like actually starting like different things like oh blue-eyed people are better than like brown-eyed people and the kids catch on to that so quickly that they're already like judging people like and you think about that's just the simplistic way of doing it think about that with people's skin color and like adults grow up like thinking that and it just keeps this non-stop cycle that we're now trying to break as this generation that wants to make real change and it starts with really people just realizing that 
there is so much that goes on mentally and subconsciously that we need to break out of. Like we need to educate the young people who are going to be the future, people you know younger than our generation, to really stop that cycle and end that thing the things that burden us from continuing as a human race really and like stopping racism that way we can end it we can continue we can move forward to just a better future without all of the nonsense and the injustice and everything that's been going on yeah Tom. yeah and just to piggyback off of uh, what zay said like like he said we are we are we are the tomorrow of this generation um honestly it's like when if if it was if it wasn't a group like us to do what we're doing now it would be it would be you guys and and you guys would be doing a good job i believe and but at a certain point you no no disrespect but no you I guys would die off i can't experience and, what you guys experienced right, growing up i can't right, right like i said no disrespect you guys would die off so if if we if we if we just allow that to to fly away, everything's just going to go back to normal, and every everyone's going to think that racism is okay, and and there is going to be no change to come. We we are that generation to change that. We are. Uh, piggybacking off of what he said, I do concur with his statement that like it would be prosperous, you know, for the older generation to if they were leading the movement but i do think it's it's more suitable for the newest of the the leading to really try and get everybody that's behind us to follow through with us because a logical reason for it i think is considering how your guys' generation had it and coming off of like world war ii and all of that the way that the oppression and the depression and the racism and the all the negative energy that came after that instills in you guys' minds and it's something that you guys are bred it in and something that you guys are you know like grow, you grew up in that so you carry certain traits that reflect off of the things that you had going on when you were younger that's what i think racism is so having a newer ideology and having a newer look on it with us i think is the best idea because we have all kinds of stuff going on in this generation absolutely i mean it sometimes it feels so overwhelming because the topic of racism is you know somebody talked about it being medusa's snake hair right there are so many different levels to this that you need to chop off right absolutely you, you talk about it you know within our, our the elected representatives of the united states of america like 90 percent white right vote okay you gotta chop off that you gotta chop off education you gotta chop off entertainment it's it is everywhere that it's overwhelming but you gotta pick one thing right stay in your lane and make effect in that in that lane and then try to compel others to help you make effect in those in those lanes because it's so overwhelming um, and I do and I said to you this to you guys before I am saddened that it wasn't the adults who made the decision to have the protest and I on behalf of all adults everywhere I'm sorry to you for that but I am also just so incredibly astonished and proud that you're right, you guys are the next voices. You are the individuals who are going to make the change as you grow up and, and do all the amazing things that you're gonna do. So it's almost better. It's better that you guys did this and you use this platform to have these voices. And I implore you guys to keep speaking because I know I'm gonna continue to listen. I'm gonna continue to read. Um, and I, you know, I think every adult owes that to society, right? We all owe that to have these conversations. We owe that to Phoenixville to have this conversation. Anything else you guys want to say before I before I end us here? I'm so thankful you guys joined us. Like every conversation I have teaches me more. So thank you. Yeah, so we actually have a GoFundMe page, but basically what that's going to do is I'll say the name after is like the money either goes to nonprofits or any events that we do to speak on this matter. And the GoFundMe is actually black, yes, yeah, black, black excellence. It's called black excellence. Black that is the you GoFundMe. You want to spell that? B L A C K C E L L E N C E. Okay. Black we'll get it from you guys and we'll make sure. Yeah, it's we'll on get it. The, We're still we'll working sure out the complications. Screen, right? Okay. Um, have you guys like partnered up with a nonprofit or somebody to help you? 
time. We haven't partnered directly, but we definitely have been talking with Dr. P, uh, Melissa Sushman, and Mayor Urschler in order to plan these next events and in order to build a nonprofit out of what we have so we can kind of start our own and then think about where we want this money to go. Probably black owned businesses is what we were thinking. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we started to GoFundMe in order to have you know, money and income to make these events as organized and as nice as possible so that while educating people and, you know, it costs a lot for like food and DJs and stuff like that. So that's kind of why we made it. Well, you're in good hands with Mayor Peter and Melissa Schusterman and Dr. P uh -huh. helping you along the way. There are no less than 300 nonprofits within Phoenixville. So Hopefully this can get out to some nonprofits who can help you figure out how to set that up and organize it and teach you kind of the structure of, of what a nonprofit could do and help you with all the reporting. Um, any, any way else we can help you? Any, any way else this Phoenixville community can support? Yeah, um, this actually goes perfectly into what I did want to say originally. The only thing that could be beneficial in terms of like you guys is um, we just want to make sure that everybody is being a part of it. There is no like specific people should be a part of it. and. At least for me, um, I believe that it's important to have the older generation backing us because of the wisdom of it. And we're trying to just get the whole human race on a whole nother level. At least for me, again, this is me personally. I want to take the whole human race up. But we start with the black people, you know what I mean? Because, like, this is something that's really pressing a matter now. And this is something that's happening in front of our television screens today. And this is something my nephews will never forget for the rest of their lives three years old, nine years old, 10 years old, you know, never forget this for the rest of their lives, what they see on the screen, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, all that, you know what I mean? So we're just trying to go on up and up as much as possible. Yeah, and I just I just wanted to uh, talk about change because change was uh, mentioned a lot in this conversation, but how, how does change really come about? What is change, you know? Um, I, I believe personally that that going about this change, it's really not a physical change more than it is a mental change. Mm -hmm. it's a, this is a mentality thing where people have to take into consideration that everyone has feelings, everyone has rights, and everyone has responsibility, not only to themselves, but to the people that surround them. This is uh, this change should be something that should better, not only, that should not only better people's minds, but better people's hearts for each other. And honestly, I, I'm, I don't, I'm too, I'm too like excited for for what's to come. Honestly, like. Yeah. <laughs> going. <laughs> going off of that, I think instead of just going and saying like we're gonna end racism, I think instead of that because I feel like that is gonna take a lot more. I feel like we should instead of going after racism going after like what he said like the mental part of it like before you go about like being racist like think what have they gone through think like that's why we're trying to target the youth because if that's in their minds to already accept our culture and accept what we've went through that they won't have that thought and they will think and they will be like oh well that's wrong like I shouldn't think that I think that's what we should target mm -hmm. that's why we're targeting the youth Nikili, last word. Um, kind of to go off of what Jeremiah said, I think a lot of people, like the All Lives Matter versus Black Lives Matter, a lot of people, I know a lot of people who didn't support Black Lives Matter at first because they thought when we say Black Lives Matter, it's on, we saying only Black Lives Matter. That's not the case. We understand that every other life has value to it, but when we say that, it's like, when they say that they thought Black Lives Matter was counterintuitive because they thought that, you know, well, I'm a minority as well, my life matters, we go through struggles as well. But when we say Black Lives Matter, we understand that you guys are going through, but you guys aren't being killed by the police in the streets simply for being the color of your skin. When we say that, and I think as a community and as a group, we should do like more, it's not, you know, our sole responsibility to educate people. People can educate themselves, yeah. but I think we should do as like, you know, activists that we are, we should act, we should, educate those people who are confused on the topic because I know I've had to spend a few minutes of my time or a few days educating people and saying pretty much what it's about and that they had the wrong idea of what it was. Yeah, not everyone wants to be educated. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me and thank you for your brave conversation. 
and for doing an outstanding job in this community, for being representatives of the movement and also for your continued passion moving forward. Um, you guys are leading the way and I know my, my four and six year old are, I, I hope they follow and I hope you guys can connect with them. I might even just shove them at you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> all right guys, this is uh, Brooke Inti with Voxy Pop. Uh, for those viewers, this is a video on demand. This is a powerful video. So I implore you to share this with your friends and family, to have this as a basis for conversation moving forward. You can find our videos on voxypop.com backslash town hall. You can also find them on Facebook. Sorry guys, they're not on Snapchat yet. Uh, but please find them and share them and have the uncomfortable conversations and give a round of applause for these amazing students as they move forward in life. And as a community here in Phoenixville, let's support them and let's help them attain their dreams. Um, and we'll give you all the information you need on our page. So thank you again, I'm Brooke Into your host. Have a great day.